Okay, so if you come to this video, then you are looking for extra explanation on packet four, page one of this packet. So in this page, we are gonna be graphing quadratic equations that are in vertex form. So vertex form is when you see those parentheses and there's a number outside of the parentheses. So when we see a problem like this, the first thing you wanna start off with is what is the shift? So remember um, those basic shift rules. Um, let me write them up here so that way we can look at them together. So if you have like a quadratic equation in vertex form, something like this, then remember that whenever you have a minus sign on the inside, it's saying that it's going to be moving right. If you have a plus sign on the inside, it's going to be moving left. Now, this top part on the outside of the uh, on the outside of the parentheses, if you have a plus sign, you're either going to be moving up or down. But a plus sign means up, a negative sign means down. So when I'm looking at this problem here, I notice there's a minus two on the inside, so that immediately tells me that it's moving right. So uh, let me fill that in. So this is moving right two, and then I see a plus one on the outside. So if it's a plus on the outside, it's moving up. So this is up one. And we always start from the origin and then move in that shift. So right two, up one, hits it right there on the coordinate point. And so our vertex, because we just plotted our vertex, is two, one, x first, then y. And so now we need to draw that U shape for the parabolas, because parabolas have this U shape or quadratics um, have this U shape, which is called the parabola. Now to create this parabola, you need the vertex, which is what we have, but then you need two more points to the side so you can draw a symmetric U. So to do that, let's take a look here. So one way we can do it is using the slope. So the slope is usually a number next to the X or outside of the parentheses. So here's X, outside of it is the slope, so this slope here is one, right? There's not a number there, so you can assume it's one or one over one for the rise over run. So you would go up one from the vertex and over one and plot. But then you have to do the other way, up one over to the left, so that you can get a symmetrical U. Now when you see these three dots, do not make a V, curve it and make a U. There we go. Now, when I look at this here, the vertex looks like a minimum because it's the lowest point, right? So it's a minimum. Um, the axis of symmetry, well, that's when you cut this U in half. Which X value does it hit? So we're gonna cut this U in half like this. And notice that I hit at X two, so x equals two, and make sure you write x equals two, not just two, because that vertical line represents the, uh, so anything that's a line can be represented as an equation, so x equals two, not just a number. So a y-intercept um, is when you take a look at the curve and see where does it hit the, um, the y-axis. So here's our y-axis, right? Unfortunately, I don't know for sure when does this line hit the y-axis because, well, I kind of estimated what this curve would, uh, you know, be how it would be drawn out if I were to connect the dots. So right now, it doesn't look like this curve is hitting this y-axis. So that's the part that's unfortunate. Um, I don't really know when does this curve hit the y-axis. So Basically, what I'm saying is that oftentimes you can't use the graph to figure out what your y-intercept is because it all depends on your drawing. So what we do instead of relying on the graph is understand how do you get y-intercepts. When you are on the y-axis or y-intercept, notice how your x value is always zero, right? So a y-intercept is a coordinate where x equals zero so if I know that x equals zero, I can plug it into my equation and find my y. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna plug in, let me get a pen here, 
I'm going to take my equation. So it was x minus 2, but instead I'm going to plug in 0 for x, minus 2 squared plus 1. So all I've done is taken 0 and plugged it in, and now I'm going to fully work this out. Now keep in mind, if you're working on a problem like this and you're simplifying, please use uh, PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So parentheses first. Inside the parentheses means 0 minus 2 gives me negative 2. Exponents are next. So negative 2 squared is like saying negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. Bring down the 1. Now it's just 4 plus 1, so 4 plus 1 is 5. So that means that our y here is 5. So this actually, this curve actually hits it at 5. And so I should have drawn my curve out to here and then connected the dots, but I didn't do that, but that's okay. So the domain here, um, and, and before I actually move on, the reason why I say it's okay is that you just need to make sure that three points on the graph are accurate, okay? Um, if you spend too much time making sure that everything on the graph is accurate, you're going to um, lose track of time, and I don't want you guys to do that. I wanna make sure that you guys know how to use um, the equation to get at least three points so that way you can create that U shape or that parabola. That's what I care about. This stuff you can always calculate um, using the equation. So like I said, graphing is just an estimation. Um, domain, in this case, parabolas, like I said last time, because it has an arrow pointing to the left and an arrow pointing to the right, that means that it's gonna keep on extending um, to the left and keeps on extending to the right. So this is going from negative infinity to positive infinity. So you can write it that way, negative infinity to positive infinity, or you can just write it as all real numbers. Because remember, all quadratics, are the domain is always all real numbers. Uh, last thing here is the range. The range is the lowest y value. The lowest y value here is one, and it does need a bracket since there's a closed circle. Now, the highest y value has arrows pointing up, so that tells me that it's going to positive infinity. And that's it. So let's try the other three problems. Okay, so here's number two. And so just like last time, um, we were talking about, you know, graphing with the shifts first so you can find your vertex. The inside here tells me that the minus four is saying that it's moving right four. And then outside of the parentheses, I have a plus six. So that's telling me it's going up six. So I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go in this case, right four, up six. Wow, that's really high, that's right there. So let's plot it and write down that coordinate. So that's four, six. Now I need to graph the U, so I'm gonna use the slope here. Here is where it gets tricky. And this goes back to journal 18, where I said that that there is, um, sorry, this number here is the slope technically, but here's the only caveat. When you use this as a slope, your run, your rise over run, the run has to be one. Let me just write that to the side here. The run has to be one to use a slope because parabolas do not increase linearly, okay? So you can use it one time, one, uh, one to the left, one to the left, one to the right, but after that one unit, you cannot use it anymore, okay? So here's how I can use this to help me get my next three points. So my slope here, you guys can see right now, is negative one over two. But here's the thing, I need to make sure my run is actually one. So I'm gonna put this entire fraction over one. So in that case, that means my rise is negative one over two, and my, one here, uh, my run is one. So if I were to follow this, that means I would be going a half a unit down and over one and then plot. And then I would go down a half and over one unit and then plot. And then I would draw my curves. 
okay? So one of the things is that this oftentimes the fraction is confusing to people. And so what they do is like they change it into a decimal. And so they can also write this as negative 0.5 over 1 to make it a little bit easier for them to graph on a grid. Um, so just so you guys know, anytime you have a fraction as your slope, you have to make sure the run is 1. So put that fraction over 1. If you want to change that fraction to a decimal, go ahead and do that. Okay, so from this picture, the vertex here, it looks like it's a maximum because it's the highest point on this um, parabola. So this is a max. The axis of symmetry looks like it hits it at x equals 4. That's not a very good straight line, but it does hit it at x equals 4. So I need to write this as x equals 4. Remember, we write that as an equation. The y-intercept, I don't know what that is. So that's where I have to plug in 0 for x. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x and find my y. So that's going to be negative 1 half, 0 minus 4 squared plus 6. And so when I'm working this out, remember, inside the parentheses first, so order of operation. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4 squared plus 6. Negative 4 squared is 16, because negative 4 times negative 4 gives you 16, positive 16. Now, you can take this 16 and multiply it by 1 half, and you could do that in the calculator by changing 1 half into a fraction. Just do 1 divided by 2 and you'll get a um, decimal. So change the fraction to a decimal, and then multiply it by 16. Or, I just asked myself, if this is a half and I'm multiplying by 16, what's half of 16? That is 8. So negative 8, because that's a negative 1 half, plus 6, which gives you negative 2, looks like. Negative, yeah, negative 2. So negative 2 is my y. My domain here is going to be all real numbers, because there's an arrow pointing to the left and right. So the domain still all real numbers for the x. The, the y, the range, the lowest X uh, the lowest y value here, notice how this parabola points down with an arrow, right? If it points down with an arrow, that means it's actually going from negative infinity. And the highest point on this parabola is that peak right there, which is 6. So negative infinity to 6 on the y-axis is the highest. And I'm going to put a bracket there. Okay, let's try the next slide here. So let's first look at the shifts here. So we have a plus 3 on the inside and a minus 2 on the outside. So this plus on the inside is going to say that's going left 3, right? So if we have a plus sign on the inside, we're going left. And then there's a minus sign on the outside, so that means we're going down 2. So if we go right 3, down 2, we're right about here. I'm going to make a plot. And so that's negative 3 negative 2 for my vertex coordinate. Now, this is where I want to use the slope here. So my slope is 2 over 3. Oh no, it's a fraction. The run is not over 1. So what I have to do is I'm going to make my uh, fraction here 2. So my slope is still 2 over 3, but I need to write that over 1. So what you can do is change 2 over 3 into a decimal, which is 0 0.66. I'm just going to round off to two decimal places. And then it would be over 1. So this looks like a positive 0 0.66. So I have to go up about, it's like a little over a half. And then over 1. Okay. And then there we go. And then I'm going to graph my lines. Okay. And so looking at the vertex here, it looks like the vertex is a minimum. And the axis of symmetry, well, it looks like it cuts it at x equals negative 3. And so in this case, we have um, x equals negative 3. The y-intercept here, I have to plug in 0 in for that.
Okay, so I'm just working out this problem. Sorry, I'm being really quiet. Um, so zero plus three gives you three, and then three squared gives you nine, and then two over three times nine. If you don't know how to do that, all you gotta do is when you're multiplying fractions, um, you can make nine into a fraction if you put it over one, right? And so two times nine gives you, when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So two times nine gives you 18. Two, three times one gives you three. I'm gonna bring down the two. So if I work this out on this side here, 18 over three is gonna give you, uh, what is it, six? 18 divided by three gives you six, minus two, which is four. So the y-intercept here is 0, 4, because x was 0, y here in this case was 4. The domain is all real numbers, because that's what it is for all quadratics, because there's an arrow to the left and an arrow to the right. Um, the range here, the lowest y value is negative 2. I'm going to put a bracket there. And the highest y value it points with an arrow up, so that tells me it's going to be going to infinity. Um, so, pause and infinity parentheses. And that's it, guys. So, remember, first thing when you get an equation like this and it's in parentheses, it's in vertex form. So, vertex form is you're going to do a shift. And so, you're going to shift, you know, left or right based on the sign, up and down based on the outside. Plot your vertex. Um, if the vertex is on the dip part of the U, then it is a minimum. If it's on the peak part of the U, then it's a maximum. Um, the axis of symmetry is when you cut the U in half and find where does it hit the x-axis. The y-intercept is when you plug in zero into the equation and find the y-value, and it's always a coordinate. The domain for all quadratics are always all real number. The range is when you have the lowest y-value to the highest y-value. And I also like to mention when you're using the slope, you always make sure that the run is always one. So what you can do is, oh, if you have a fraction is take the fraction and put it over one, change the fraction to a decimal. All right, guys, that's it for this uh, video here. I hope that helps with your homework. Have a great day, guys.